The governor's delivered his state of the state address. Legislative session is kicked off and in full swing and Capitol Conference is right around the corner. This week on Talking Real, we're bringing you all the updates from legislative session that you need to know to get up to speed on what's going on at the state capitol. So as Josh likes to say, let's take a drive down to 23rd and Lincoln. Welcome back to Talking Real, brought to you by the Oklahoma Association of Realtors. We're here for episode 107. And Nabil, you're back. I'm back. Nabil, how's your day? (laughs) It's going well. Good. Glad to be back in the swing of things. And I I never like sitting at home for being sick. (laughs) I don't think anybody (laughs) likes it. Well, some people, it's a good reason to kind of slow down for a second. That's that's true. But I don't like slowing down when I have to. That's fair. I like that. (laughs) We're also joined in the studio today by Josh Cockroft. Josh, how are you today? I'm also back. <laughs> also back. <laughs> hey. <laughs> We've had a little sick going on the, the office the last week or so. Fortunately, the people that got sick decided to stay home and not come to the office and spread it around. So those of us that are not sick appreciate that. Well, not only sickness, but it's been like eight months since you guys have had me on here. So. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> like Texas football, I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> Except way better, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, we haven't had Josh on in a while because legislative session has been dormant for the last eight months. It's it's been a little slow. Yeah. A little slow, but we're getting back in the swing. And and that's back to it. This is the comeback episode. Yes. (laughs) So we figure now that legislative session is back on. We're back in full swing of things. And as always, that's a... 90 miles a minute kind of thing that goes on down there. It's a little bit crazy. And we want to make sure that everybody that listens to Talking Real is staying informed about what's going on with legislative session. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're doing things a little different this year. Uh, This is going to be a regular Tuesday episode for this legislative session beginning update. But then we're going to kind of switch it up a little bit so that we're not hitting you every single Tuesday with a legislative update. Instead, we're going to release special episodes throughout session as we have good updates so that we can bring you your regular Tuesday talking real every week. But then also you can have a special episode, maybe weekly, maybe a little bit less, depending on what's going on, of everything going on down at the Capitol so you can stay informed on that. So A little double dose of talking real. Exactly. So make sure that you are subscribed so you get those up-to-the-minute notices when a new episode is dropped that may be a special episode on like a Friday that talks about legislative session. Mm-hmm. And pay attention to that talking real feed because that's where it's going to be. That's right. And tell your friends especially the political junkies, to be tuning in for the next <laughs> four months and then for the eight months after that. Yeah. So, Josh, let's get into legislative session. We started the first Monday in February, so we're just over a little over two weeks. I mean, yeah, this is week three. Really, yeah, we're, we're in week three now. Yeah, this is week three. Uh, time flies when you're having fun. Yes, it does. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were three weeks in a legislative session um, You know, from an from OAR's standpoint, our work really begins with our government affairs committee over the interim, but you know, those eight dormant months um, where the legislature is working on interim studies uh, on, on issues that they're, they're wanting to look at for the, the next legislative session. Uh, and then our government affairs committee, uh, they met late in January to go over all the legislation that had been filed. Now, we're in the second year of the 57th legislature. So each legislature serves for two years, one term. Uh, so we're in the second half of that, last year being the first half of that. Um, and so, you know, obviously we've talked many times previously of the successes of last legislative session, uh, having all of our priority legislation passed this year shaped up a little bit differently because we don't, we're not necessarily pushing any one or three or however many issues we don't, we, we did not request any bills. However, that, like you said, that doesn't mean we're not involved. Uh, and so we're uh, we're now in week three. First week we had the governor stay the state address where he lays out his vision. Uh, you had over we're looking at over four thousand bills running through the process because that's the other thing with the second year of a cycle. All the bills that weren't heard last year, you got to watch out for. <laughs> yeah. 
this year because they can they can still come back. Uh, they're still alive, and so when you combine last year's and this year's bills, we're right around four thousand bills this year that we're watching about. Three uh, th- about two hundred of which are uh, actually bills that we're watching closely that affect the real estate industry in one form or fashion. But uh, so yeah, it's been a busy couple of weeks. Yeah. So you mentioned the governor's state of the state address. Yeah. Um, you went to that. I did. Wasn't a- I wasn't able to make it, but. Do you have any interesting takeaways? What's a kind of a snippet from the the governor's state of the state? Well, obviously, second year of the governor's uh, term here. Uh, last year, you had a little bit of a a period of that where he was getting uh, where he was breaking himself in, being new to politics, um, new to the to the capital atmosphere, if you will. Uh, so you had a a situation last year where he was coming in. There was a budget surplus. Uh, so there was extra money that they could allocate wherever it needed to go. Um, you had a bunch of issues that both the legislature and the governor wanted to tackle together. They worked very hard on a lot of those and and accomplished a lot of those. And so this year, uh, it, it it begins to when when I was I was in the gallery for the state of the state address. Um, you start to see a little bit more of the policy come out because governor last year he's kind of acclimating himself to the atmosphere if you will uh of the bubble that is 23rd and lincoln (laughs) um and now he's uh he's been there a year he's starting to put some of the policy things that he wants in place or try to put some of those in place so the overall atmosphere of the the state of the state one from a fiscal standpoint uh, urging caution. We've seen a little bit of a slowdown in the economy due to the oil and gas industry, a little bit of uh, a pullback from from that industry. Uh, as oil and gas goes, so goes Oklahoma. Um, that's just how it has always been. Uh, and so a little bit of a slowdown. So he, he pitched a lot uh, along the fiscal conservatism uh, in the uh, in the budget process, wanting to put some some more uh, funds back for savings, looking a lot uh, when you look into the policy area, looking on restructuring how state government is done in a lot of areas. There's some talk about consolidations of agencies and f- streamlining agencies, um, and then continuing down uh, the the path that really the legislature has been working on for the last several years in areas like criminal justice reform. Uh, the brand new industry that started uh, a year and a half ago, medical marijuana in the state of Oklahoma, there's still a tremendous amount of work that needs to be done on that. So it was about an hour and 20 minute long speech. Um, and so there's a lot more than that in there, but just those are kind of some of the highlights. Interesting. Yeah, there's going to be a lot that uh, probably develops on some of those. Like I said, we've seen a number of medical marijuana bills that are slowly working their way through the process right now that they're still putting a huge focus on kind of nailing down that regulation and, and kind of what's going on there. I'm sure that's going to be a, a big piece of it. But like you said, the kind of government efficiency budget piece, all that's going to be an overarching deal too. So definitely keep an eye on that because that can start to cross over onto real estate issues, you know, depending on budget issues, those kinds of mm-hmm. things that can absolutely start to move over into our territory. So Just we got to like keep an eye on that. a few years ago with sales tax on services and sure. things absolutely. like that. So. Yeah. You never know what, what could come up. So keep an eye on that. Well, what else is going on down there right now in the first couple of weeks? Well, right now, working through the committee process, uh, you kind of take the legislative session in uh, sections, if you will. Um, First month is dedicated to committee work. There's very little that actually happens on the floor of the House or the Senate. Uh, and so uh, we're still starting uh, to, to see some of the preliminary budget numbers start to roll in. There are certain certifications that they go through throughout the f- spring to certify how much money the legislature has. Uh, so you're starting to see the, the budget negotiations start to roll a little bit. Uh, but really, primarily, it is committee work. Um, you, you see a tremendous amount of bills running through committee. They have until next Thursday to be able to to move everything through committees and then they'll start for a couple of weeks of work on the bills that actually came out of committees on the house floor so um like i said we've got about 200 bills that are still kind of that, that we're actively tracking uh that are kind of floating out there that we're going to continue to uh first see if they get through committee but then work them through the process do you see 
any major red flags flaring up or it's more of a we're hoping this stays as calm as it is right now? Well, you always hope that it stays as calm <laughs> as it possibly can because uh, anything can change overnight in that building. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's a little bit of a different feel this year. Obviously, last year we had the priority legislation. This year we're not really pushing anything. But one of the things that the Government Affairs Committee wanted to put a focus on is coming alongside, even though we may not have priority legislation, coming alongside our industry partners. Uh, our industry partners are also pushing agendas this year. Mm-hmm. And uh, coming alongside the, the home builders, the bankers, the, the state chamber, the uh, Oklahoma Land Title Association, individuals and colleagues that we work with in this industry every single day, that they've got issues that they're working on. So uh, there's several of those uh, that, that that are moving through the process that we're going to come alongside and help them with. Um, but, you know, like I said, it can change at any second. Um, so you just got to keep an eye on it as you go through the process. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, we have a fantastic tool for that. It's the bill tracker. Exactly. That you can check out at okrealtors.com forward slash bill tracker. And it stays updated almost to the minute yeah right? yeah, yeah. It, it, it's at least updated every single night so if if our staff goes through and changes something on the system or updates a status on a particular bill you can go look at the our website bill tracker and uh, view those changes almost immediately it's a yeah. great way to, to figure out what we're what we're working on supporting and what we're working on you know hopefully trying to kill yeah I love the idea of working with some of our industry partners. I mean, there are things that we did last year, for example, the uh, e, the e notary, right, and the um, home buyer savings account right. that benefits all of our industry partners, mm-hmm. right? That's something that we can all get behind and support. And so, while we may not have priorities, they do. And so, when we go to them last year and say, "Hey," <laughs> will you what will you go and tell people that you guys support it as well mm-hmm. then we can do that same thing right. and, and continue to build that coalition because we always talk about that you know all 11,500 realtors that we have in Oklahoma have a very loud voice together but when you combine that with all the home builders and the abstractors and the appraisers and everybody else the bankers and all that it gets uh, the voice gets real loud yep. when we got something that we need to talk about so I think that's great I think that's a, I'm glad the government affairs committee has taken that that approach Absolutely. And, you know, that that has been a tremendous asset to be able to make our voice even stronger at the Capitol. I mean, I, I whenever I speak to any of our members in, in a group setting or anything, members don't realize that having the realtor brand behind your name, that is power. And, and when we're able to work alongside with our partners, uh, the home builders are a great example this year. They're working on some legislation that they've worked on for a couple of years uh, on uh, making sure that municipalities can't regulate uh, residential aesthetic designs of a building unless they go through uh, the the proper channels and ordinances at the local level. Uh, we've seen some abuses of that across the state. So home builders came to us and said, can you help? And so we're, we're helping and being able to push forward those those issues. Uh, so it's it's been a real Really tremendous asset. Abstractors is another area. There's several uh, measures moving through uh, the, the committee process right now. I actually had a conversation this morning with OAR Government Affairs Chair Scott Ward about because he serves on the Abstractors Board as well as a realtor member um, that they're working on. So it's really good to be able to come alongside our industry partners because when we do have a year that we desperately need help, we want those people to come alongside and help us because we're all in the boat together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so while we're out there, we've got again, we've got you and of course our contract lobbyist Jared Schaus that's out there. Um, have you seen anything right now that, uh, in particular, anything specific that we're keeping an extra close eye on that you want to bring up today? There's a few uh, measures in the Senate that actually have not been heard yet, and they have not been scheduled for a hearing, which is good. Um, because had, they've got one week left. Yeah, one next week, week left. Could be their last chance. So if it's not heard by next week, it is dead. Um, well, you should never say anything's dead <laughs> in that building because it can be resurrected later on, kind of. That's a very long story <laughs> for another day. But, um, you know, they've got one more week to get things through committee. There's a, there's a few issues uh, that we've seen in the Senate. Um, it, it's, it's nothing we haven't seen before. Um, some things like property registration bills, uh, uh, property manage, uh, management bills uh, to make sure that 
individuals, property managers, or even uh, some short-term rental uh, providers are registering with the cities. That's always been an issue for realtors. Um, I've had the opportunity to talk with most of the members that are running those bills. Um, and either one, it uh, was a, a specific issue that they had in their district that they're trying to work through. Uh, and everybody has been uh, very gracious and, and great to work with to, as we've explained kind of our position and making sure that we're very careful because we want to provide the, the quality and the quantity of homes for everybody in the state. Um, so, you know, those are the, the, those are the usual uh, red flags, if you will, that come up every single year uh, to be determined if they go anywhere. We were having those discussions um, uh, daily with, with those members. Um, there's a few measures that are some, uh, some tweaks to the Landlord Tenant Act that we've actually asked for some guidance from NAR on. Uh, NAR uses has a great program called Land Use Initiative that we can send language of a proposed issue in uh, to NAR and their team of attorneys analyzes everything, compacts it, and sends basically sends it back to us in an, mm-hmm. an executive summary to say, here's what it does, here's what you should be concerned about, here's some things that you could change on it. That's really cool. Yeah, it's it's a really good opportunity because when you're handed that 94-page or that 151-page <laughs> bill and you're going, what in the world does this do, um, it's great to have a team – in, in D.C. and Chicago from NAR standpoint to come alongside and help us. So there's there's a few measures that are uh, looking at the Landlord-Tenant Act that we're still trying to figure out where, where they're going with them. But again, um, we talk all the time about the relationship that the and the, the, the telling of our story that our members can do. And that's what staff does as well, is building those relationships with those legislators uh, every single day so that you can have that dialogue and say, here's some issues with this, with this proposal. Have you thought about it? Most of the time they haven't. Um, so, I mean, overall, uh, things are going very smoothly at the Capitol, knock on wood. It stays that way. Um, but, uh, we're going to keep an eye on it either way. That's fantastic. Yeah. We have an opportunity coming up soon for all of our members to get engaged as well that we want to talk about real quick. See this process firsthand. Yes. So tell us about CapCon coming up. CapCon, March 3rd and 4th here in Oklahoma City. Uh, it's a always an incredible event focused all around advocacy. Um, last year we had over 200 members that, that, that came. We're, we're hoping that uh, this year is going to be an even larger crowd. Uh, CapCon is a day at the Capitol that's focused, like I said, completely around advocacy. This year we're changing it up a little bit in that uh, we're going to focus not only on state advocacy, we're going to talk about local advocacy and federal advocacy as well, because they're all intertwined. They're all connected. Mm -hmm. Um, You cannot have an effective advocacy strategy at the state level without understanding that there are implications coming from the federal government that are passed all the way down from the state and down even to the local level. So uh, we've got several sessions planned, some really uh, engaging speakers. We're going to have March 4th. That's that's the day of of CapCon. That's actually the day after Super Tuesday. Uh, So if you don't know what Super Tuesday is, that's like the Super Bowl of of political happenings because we've got the uh, presidential primary on Tuesday the 3rd. Make sure you go vote. Um, But we're actually having a session focused um, completely around elections and polling, uh, a bunch of different issues. We've got Bill Shepard from SoonerPoll.com coming in. He's a nationally recognized pollster here in Oklahoma uh, that does an incredible job on a bunch of different issues. And uh, we've got him coming in for uh, some updates on just where the people of Oklahoma are on a bunch of these issues, not not just the presidential side, but a bunch of issues that face Oklahomans every day. I am super excited about that. That would be really interesting. I, I've seen a similar session with uh, another pollster about two years ago, and like it was one of the most fascinating things because they really get in. We have this impression of 
what people think and what people believe. <laughs> and often that can be a little bit clouded by our own beliefs right. that mm-hmm. we sort of extend that out to other people or just in our little locality or our friends or everything else. But man, they really get into the numbers and it is absolutely fascinating, especially some of the like correlations they can draw between what people th- are voting and why and all that. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it, that'll be, I think, an absolutely fascinating session one, that I can't wait for. One it. of the yeah. reasons that I love Bill Shepard coming in to do this is because Bill is one of those people that will tell you, no, you're wrong. That be, That's your bias mm-hmm. talking. <laughs> um, because here's what the numbers actually are, and he can right. back that up. So yeah. really looking forward to that. Um, again, focusing around federal, state, and local advocacy. We wrap the day up in the afternoon by actually going to the Capitol and talking with your legislators. Again, that relationship that you build, telling your story as a realtor, as a professional, speaks more into your representatives or your senators than I as a staff here at OAR can do when you are when you are developing that relationship. And so we're going to flood the halls of the Capitol, which is not actually too hard because the Capitol is, is under construction <laughs> right now. A little bit of a mess. It's a little bit of a mess, but we're, we're going to persevere. Uh, visit with our representatives and our senators uh, dropped by the governor's and lieutenant governor's office. Uh, watch the proceedings from the Senate and the House galleries. Uh, and then, of course, everybody's favorite part, we're going to uh, conclude the day with ice cream. So. Can't have a if day I, the if I didn't without have ice you. cream. Yeah, exactly. If I didn't have you throughout all of that, I should have you at ice cream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait, did he say ice cream? Absolutely. <laughs> well, there's still a chance to get signed up. And the nice thing is that it's free to get signed up. There's no mm-hmm. cost to attend unless you want to get a hotel room down here. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get signed up at okrealtors.com forward slash capital conference. So make sure you head over there, get signed up. You still got plenty of time to do that, but not a lot of time. So... <laughs> Go ahead and get it done so that we know that we can expect you because it's going to be another good one this year. And even though we don't have that priority request legislation, like Josh said, we've got over 200 bills that we're watching. Go online to that okrealtors.com forward slash bill tracker. You can see legislation that we like, that we're promoting. Maybe we didn't request it, but we still want it. You can also see that stuff that we're opposing. And this is where you get to go to your legislator and tell them, hey, maybe this property registry thing is a bad idea and here's why. Mm -hmm. Here's why we need you to listen to us when we talk to you about it. Here's what it causes, you know, the problems it creates for business and everything else. And so having your story out there, and that's where we're going to talk about all the the policy positions and everything else before we lead up to that day so you can go in and know exactly what you need to be doing. Because like you said, they've gotten the story from maybe one side of this is why we need it and here's why we might not. Exactly. And we're, we're going to that morning throughout all of our talks about advocacy and the importance of it at all levels. Uh, we're going to equip our members because uh, it can be intimidating to and it can kind of be uh, uh, you can be unsure, uh, unsure of yourself in going and talking to these legislative mm-hmm. leaders. I guarantee you, because I've been there myself, that they they live in communities just like all of us, and they need the feedback and the advice. Uh, so we're going to equip our members to to know how to discuss those those issues with the legislators, and then we're going to unleash them in the Capitol and go tell our story. Sounds good. Yeah, can't wait. Well, we're going to wrap this one up and make sure you're subscribed because. You want to make sure you catch all the legislative updates that we're bringing to you through Talking Real throughout Mm -hmm. the legislative session through the month of May. So, again, make sure you're subscribed. We're going to have plenty of good content. I'm sure we'll talk about elections at some point because it is an election year, not only presidential, but here at the state and local level, the entire House of Representatives, the half the Senate, a number of local officials are up for elections as well. So that's going to be kind of an ongoing theme too. And everything else that changes from week to week at the Capitol. So make sure you're tuned in, not just on Tuesday to the regular Talking Reel, but the special legislative updates we're going to bring you throughout session. We'll we'll bring Josh in and um, see if we can get some special guests in to come talk to us as well about legislative issues. That's right. And Share this podcast, not only with a fellow real estate enthusiast, but also, like you said, a political junkie, (laughs) because those special episodes are going to be very informative. Absolutely. And if you haven't done so yet, leave us a rating, write us a review. We love hearing from you and seeing those five stars on our ratings. Absolutely. Makes us happy. Absolutely. (laughs) And if you got any feedback for us, please go ahead and email it in. You can email us at podcast at okrealtors.com. So until next time, we'll see you next Tuesday on Talking Real.